Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and please feel free to continue your lunch. I just finished mine, so if I have broccoli or something in my teeth, just let me know quietly. Uh, it's a delight for me to be here again this year. As has already been mentioned, this is not my first time at the conference. Clearly, this one uh, looks uh, like it's right in line to be a great success uh, again this year. Uh, in fact, this is the third year of the conference uh, and my third year being here for the Canadian Science Policy Conference. And I think I can say without hesitation from what I've already heard and being here myself again, this is really becoming a premier annual event. A uh, way in which uh, leaders uh, can discuss, debate, and look to the future for Canadian science policy. And once again, as I've mentioned, you've put on a, a very impressive conference agenda, and I want to commend you for your commitment to science policy, and of course, uh, I look forward to seeing the results of your work this, uh, these few days. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the uh, pleasure of addressing the conference in Montreal last year where I laid out our government's plan to support and work with science research communities all across the country. And we've accomplished a great deal, I'm proud to tell you, since then, including a reversal of the brain drain. In August of this year, Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced the 2011 Vanier Canada Graduate Scholarships. These are valued at $50,000 per year for up to three years, they go to leading doctoral students studying in Canada. We did this, of course, not only to help these great folks, but to further brand Canada as a global center of excellence for research and higher learning. Now as well, over the summertime, we announced the first recipients of the Banting Postdoctoral Fellowships, which, as many of you may know, provide $70,000 per year for two years, to top-tier postdoctoral talent from Canada and abroad. These fellowships uh, help recipients develop their leadership potential and again position them and our nation as research leaders for tomorrow. And in June, as part of Budget 2011, we announced the creation of 10 new Canada Excellence Research Chairs. And this program, ladies and gentlemen, offers up to $10 million over seven years to internationally recognized researchers and their teams to conduct work in our Canadian institutions. And this fall, not very long ago, a few months ago, I had the honor to participate in the grand opening celebration of the new Stephen Hawking Center at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics in Waterloo. This, of course, was made uh, possible in part, large part, by a contribution made by our federal government. And next year, 2012, I look forward to the opening of the brand new world-class facility at the Institute for Quantum Computing, again, which the federal government was proud to support with some $50 million. Now, since the launch of the Government of Canada's Science and Technology Strategy, which Prime Minister Stephen Harper launched in 2007, we've set forth on a, a very productive path. We've set out our research priorities, We've dramatically increased science and technology spending and investment. We've improved governance structures and we've set the NRC on a very robust course for the future. We continue to support the NRC in its hands-on approach through uh, a program such as the uh, Industrial Research Assistance Program. And as you may know, this program works very closely with hundreds if not thousands of small and medium-sized businesses, the goal of course is to help them apply technologies of today to produce the new products and services and industrial processes of tomorrow. And of course, all of this is uh, simply because, as the Prime Minister has said, we absolutely believe that science powers commerce. And here we go again today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very delighted to announce today our government's further investment in the groundbreaking scientific research, the Genomics Research and Development Initiative, or GRDI. As many of you may know, the GRDI coordinates activities of federal science departments and agencies in the fields of genomics research. Eight departments receive funding through the GRDI for a period of three years, and our government's investment this round is $59.7 million over three years. Congratulations. 
This marks, ladies and gentlemen, the fifth phase of this organization's initiatives. This support will further help address important issues in public health, the economy, agriculture, and of course the environment. Since its beginning, the GRDI has been very successful. It has produced a spin-off company. It's delivered insights into the pests and diseases that could affect Canada's important wheat and canola crops. It's contributed to water, forestry, and fisheries management. And it's developed a new method to assess the influenza virus for the targeted release of vaccines. And these, of course, are just a few examples of the achievements of this organization. The next phase will, of course, support targeted research once again on three priority areas, health care, uh, food and water safety, and environmental sustainability and natural resource protection. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, our country now attracts the best and brightest minds in many scientific fields from around the world to conduct their work in our country. And we have an enviable capacity currently to develop the talent and produce the discoveries that are indeed the foundation of innovation. Our government's commitment is being noticed around the world as well. At a recent Canada-US partnership conference, we heard from some of the top innovative leaders from both of our countries about the importance of developing research clusters around our key economic corridors. And of course, we were all very proud to uh, welcome next year's uh, American Association for the Advancement of Science, which will be held in beautiful Vancouver. This will be the first time in 30 years that this event is being hosted in Canada. Last week, I had the pleasure to travel to Germany, where I met with a number of senior government officials and discussed collaborations between our countries, between our country's universities, and between our country's businesses. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the signing of the Canada-Germany Science and Technology Agreement. And ladies and gentlemen, over the past 40 years, I'm proud to tell you that more than 500 joint research projects have been successfully completed, and at any one time, there are some 100 in play. In areas of mutual benefit to our countries, the environment, energy, nanotechnology, human health, and genomics. And we are committed, ladies and gentlemen, to building further on this foundation. But we will need the help of the private sector. The private sector and the public sector must work together to continue to build and demonstrate that real leadership is what's necessary in building Canada's prosperity. We will need all levels of government we will need all levels of academia. And of course, we will need all sectors of business. This is very key in the success of going forward, literally because, again, as we look around the world, it is no secret that we continue to face difficult times. Global uncertainty is having an impact on economies all over the world, most notably in the European Union and United States. The global economy continues to face serious challenges, and we are deeply concerned. This will require continued strategic uh, actions and a determined, focused set of plans. Our quality of life, ladies and gentlemen, will depend on all of us, as a team, pushing toward the common goal. Now, Canada has weathered this economic storm better than most countries. Indeed, we are only, uh, we are the only G7 nation, I can tell you, to have recovered more than what was lost during the recession in terms of both output and jobs. However, global uncertainty and declining consumer uh, confidence is of great concern to us today. Over the last few weeks, both here and abroad, uh, my colleague, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Jim Flaherty, continues to re-emphasize our government's commitment to carrying out the next phase of Canada's economic action plan and our objective of improving the well-being of Canadians, protecting their family incomes and their businesses over the long term by securing the recovery, eliminating the deficit 
and investing in the drivers of long-term economic growth as well. Now, the uncertain economic front, which I know you did not plan on when you planned this conference, but I have to tell you, is a very good reason about the timing of this conference. It is indeed more important than ever that such conferences take place. All of us in this room uh, understand that Canada's long-term economic performance, our sustainable economic growth, will be driven by, in large measure by science and innovation and the ability to move that knowledge into the marketplace. Our government understands this. We're deeply committed to this. And since coming to office, I think we can clearly say that it has been our priority. The Prime Minister understands that by encouraging new ideas and collaboration, as well as allowing promising research to flourish, we can tap into commercial opportunities in the marketplace and we will generate revenue for our businesses. We will create more job opportunities for Canadians and an improved standard of living for all of us. Simply put, by investing in science, we, work, we are working to ensure that our economy continues to grow, that we continue to innovate in a greater percentage, that indeed we lead the world for our benefits. The CSPC's model uh, building bridges for the future of science policy is an important reminder that governments, businesses, and researchers must work together to create an, an effective innovation network, an effective innovation ecosystem. This means we all need to do our part to build an environment that supports world-leading talent, builds and strengthens our knowledge economy and moves us in the direction that the globe is going, and maximizes our returns on our financial investments and brings research and innovation to the marketplace ahead of our competitors. So today, more than ever, Canada's long-term economic competitiveness depends on ideas, creativity, creative thinking, and taking calculated risks more than ever before. In other words, it depends on innovation and collaboration amongst businesses, academia, and government, as I've said before. We need to participate in the paradigm shift. Change, ladies and gentlemen, has occurred around the world, and we must change beyond that. You know, measured as a percentage of GDP, Canada's higher education expenditures are indeed the highest amongst the G7 but we have clearly more work that can be done to set us straight for the knowledge-based economy of tomorrow. Despite high levels of federal support for business encouragement in research and development, Canada lags far behind. In this category, we are nowhere near number one. We lag behind in research and development of new products, processes, and new markets for existing products in our business communities. We lag behind in the commercialization of new products and services, and thus, we lag behind in productivity as a nation. This is a great opportunity when we consider how well Canada is doing amongst the rest of the world. Can you imagine how well we will do when we get this right? We know, as you do, that the private sector firms must do more not just in spending more on research and development, which they must do, but making it part of their business strategy day to day and translating that expenditure into new products, services, better jobs, more jobs, higher paying jobs. And that's exactly why, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, that's why I launched the Research and Development Review Panel headed by uh, Tom Jenkins to review the very generous numbers of programs that the federal government has to encourage businesses to do more research and development. Now last month I just received the report. Many of you have seen the report. Uh, I will tell you that we are studying its recommendations with great sincerity and great consideration. At the same time, as this report comes out and we look at the totality of a number of other reports we've had in the past, more broadly based, we are also looking at a new strategy for Canada's digital economy. Further, we will soon launch a comprehensive review 
of all the programs and policies concerning the aerospace sector, with a view again to maximizing the nation's competitiveness and optimizing the investments of taxpayer dollars. These are just a few of some of the initiatives that are in play by our government that we, we believe firmly are necessary and will build on a foundation, will build on the foundation that we have laid out for our future prosperity. And through these types of initiatives that I've outlined, I think it's clear, ladies and gentlemen, that again, I can tell you that our work has already begun in earnest and we are there to deliver results. It is in our best collective interests, ladies and gentlemen, to continue to collaborate, to work together as a team, to be innovative through our investments, through technology transfer, and through expanded networks of cooperation that link our universities and their research capacities, our colleges and their research and technical capacities with research organizations and our business industrial communities. All levels of government, all ages of academia and all sectors of industry. I know that that's much easier said than done, believe me. But I also know that we can do it. We are Canadians, by the way. The sky is not the limits. And I want to thank you on that note for giving me the opportunity to spend some time with you. I encourage you at this conference and I look forward to the results of it. Stay in touch as I will. Thank you very much.